Hey kids. All right, we are doing lesson 11 today, module four, and it's a word problem day, so there uh, is no introduction, so we'll just jump right in. We're gonna be solving and creating fraction word problems involving addition, subtraction, and multiplication. Um, and I, of course, will be trying to encourage you to use your tape diagrams so that we can make a picture of what we're doing. So number one, Kim and Courtney share a 16 ounce box of cereal. By the end of the week, Kim has eaten three eighths of the box and Courtney has eaten one fourth of the box of cereal. I just never wanna have fractions that are not uh, with the same common denominator. So as soon as I see that I have this, I will make an equivalent fraction. Now let's make a lovely tape diagram. How many pieces? Eight. There you go. And label each person's uh, share. So Kim has eaten three eighths. That's going to be for Kim. And Courtney has eaten two eighths, or uh, just do a different shading. Court. What fraction of the box is left? Hmm, it's really easy. Okay, so three eighths for Kim, two eighths for Courtney, and three eighths left. And it's basically just using the tape diagram to solve. It's that easy. It's very straightforward. And move on. You can also do, if you want to do more work, you can do 3 eighths plus 2 eighths equals 5 eighths. Take the whole, and that's 8 eighths, and subtract what is eaten. So if you can't figure it out from the picture, you can solve it mathematically. Okay? Matilda. Matildi has 20 pints of green paint. This one's a little bit more complicated. She uses two-fifths of it to paint a landscape and three-tenths of it while painting a clover. She decides, and again, we don't want to use fifths, we're going to use tenths. She decides that for her next painting, she will need 14 pints of green paint. And that's important information, so highlight it. How much more paint will she need to buy? Let's make a tape diagram and put it into, that's right, 10 pieces. Split it in half. Three, four, five. One, two, three, four, five. Close enough. Ten pieces. And so uh, we want to have our four tenths for the landscape. There you go. And three tenths for the clover. I wish it was all in the same line so I could circle it. Uh, mark it. Four. land sometimes I'll separate it and I'll do this clover and it doesn't really matter where you shade it but sometimes if you don't want to have the uh, the shading problems like you had um, up above if they're right next to it like oh I'm gonna do it left and then I'm gonna shade right or I'm gonna do spirals or I'm gonna put C's and L's you can do whatever you want but um, what you're looking for is what's left. So we've got all this identified. Okay, now for her next painting, she will need 14 pints of green paint. So let's figure out what we have used. Three tenths plus four tenths is gonna show you that seven tenths are used. Now why do I need this? Because I need to figure out the uh, the pints. Well, actually, this is what's used, and that means three tenths are left. And so when I look at this, this is what I'm going to combine because I'm going to need some more paint. So we have to figure out how much this is. So what do I have? I have three tenths of all the stuff that we bought. 
Okay, so if I used up that and I have this left, then I can take 3 tenths of 20 pints. Okay, yeah, hopefully my TV will stay on today in yesterday's video. TV shut off, Wi-Fi out. It's always fun. Always fun here. So let's make this a 3 times 20 over 10. Remember yesterday's strategy was use the commutative property, move that denominator over, change it to 20 tenths, which makes this a 2, and get 6 pints left. Okay, so I have 3 pints, sorry, 3 tenths left, which is 6 pints out of the 20. So... Do, 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 do. We can do the seven tenths of twenty pints and seven times twenty over ten. This is the used. Fourteen pints used. Okay, so now we, you can see, put it all together. So you've got your 14 minus 6. 8 pints needed. Okay, so now here's the whole picture. Sorry, you really can't see it. smashed there in the corner. But it's, uh, here's what's used in pints. Here's what's left in pints. This is not enough. She needs the 14 pints. So 14 minus 6 equals 8 pints. Okay? So, hooray. Let's turn the page. Top of the next. Oh, this one's fun. Jack, Jill, and Bill. Uh, they are carrying, each of them is carrying a 48 ounce bucket full of water down the hill. <laughs> Love these. By the time they reached the bottom, Jack's bucket was only three-fourths full. Jill's was two-thirds full, and poor Bill, he must have fallen down because he only has one-sixth full left. But the question is not how much water is in the buckets. Notice that it says how much water did they spill all together on their way down the hill. So what I like to do on this one is make a bucket that is, or a tape diagram that's more uh, vertical. If I could make a straight one, it'd be even better. And then you can kind of see what the question is asking. So um, this is Jack, Jill, and then Bill. And so Jack's bucket was only three fourths full. Jill's was two-thirds full, and poor Bill, two, four, five, six, poor Bill, <laughs> seriously, okay, but the question is not about adding up these amounts, the question is about finding what fraction spilled out, so what I really need here is this amount this amount, and this amount. So what fraction is that? If this is four, if each is 48 ounces, <clears throat> then I need to know what one-fourth of 48 is. And I need to know what one-third of 48 and five-sixths of 48. Okay, so that's really what I need to find out. So let's just do some simple math over here, fraction of a number, and we're going to do it the new way, 1 times 48 over 4. So in moving that 4 over, I want to simplify before I multiply. So uh, 4 is divisible by 4, or 48 is 12 times, so you can do 1 at a time. And I uh, get 4 divided by 4 is 1, and 8 divided by 4 is 2, and 12 ounces. And next one, over 3. So if you use 3 as your divisor, I'm going to try to simplify this by scooching that 3 over and divide 
four by three, you get one, there's one left over, that makes 18, and that is six. So 16 ounces uh, is spilled on the hill for Jill. The last one is five times 48 over six. And moving this six from five sixths over to 48 sixths, that makes it real easy because it's eight, because 48 is evenly divisible, which makes 40 ounces. And then you just have to add those numbers together and they're all whole numbers. There's no decimal value. So you have 68 ounces spilled. There it is. Okay, but they still got some water down the hill, so that's all right. Next one, Mrs. Diaz makes five dozen cookies for her class. One ninth of her 27 students are absent. That's kind of important to know. We're going to take care of that first. The day she brings the cookies. Oh, yeah, you snooze, you lose. You got to show up to get the cookies. If she shares the cookies equally among the students who are present, how many cookies will each student get? So always consider who's there, who's not, or uh, is Mrs. Diaz having some too? Sometimes they'll say everyone shares equally. I don't know. You just have to read carefully. All the problems are different. So let's start off with one ninth of 27. We need to figure out who's absent. So let's take them out of the equation right away. This is divisible evenly. So one times three. So I don't. I didn't really talk talk it through. Twenty seven divided by nine is three. This becomes a one. One times three over one is three. Three students are absent. Okay. So we're gonna take the one ninth of the twenty seven students and just go twenty seven minus three. Twenty four students are present. Okay. Now I have my um, the total for the set so I can figure out how to share these five dozen cookies. So I have all these cookies. Now five dozen is like five times 12. Hopefully you know that that's 60. So 60 cookies is what they're going to share between these 24 kids. And what you can do is go one, two, three, dot, 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 24. Okay? So if you set up your tape diagram to show all 24 kids are sharing these cookies, then essentially what you have is 60 divided by 24. Now check this out. If I have 60 divided by 24, look at this division problem. Look at this ratio. I could set it up and do the whole division problem, but you know, if I simplify this before I do any division, I'm going to be able to divide smaller numbers. And I sure would love to do that. In fact, I notice that both of these numbers are divisible by 6. Aren't they? So if you divide both by 6, then you end up with 10 fourths. And if I was to recognize that 10 fourths is still divisible by 2, I could shrink it down even more. 10 divided by 2 is 5, 4 divided by 2 is 2. So if I shrink this down and simplify my division problem before I get into all that work, which I could do over here, okay, and I can do that in a minute to prove it, but I'm going to end up with 2 and a half cookies each. Now if you want you can look in here and say, okay, well, uh, 24 goes into 62 times. It's like 25 to 50, and then you'd get 48, and then you can subtract and you get 12. Now, remember, we're at the point where we're just kind of putting 12 out of 24, and look, I got the same answer. 12 24ths is rule one. It's a double. P Pow! There it is. And that is equal to two and a half. So, Either way, you can divide with big numbers or you could divide with small numbers, whatever you like. 
Now this is the last one. I, I don't do these. So I'm not going to do this on the video because I don't want to fill your head with a lot of fluff when you're supposed to think of the problem yourself. So create a story problem about a fish tank for the tape diagram below. Your story must include a fraction. Um, 84 is going to be the total number of you could have plants, you could have fish. This is a story about a fish tank. Uh, you can have the parts be about food for the fish. Um, you know, some of them require live food. Some of them require fish flakes. Uh, but one, two, three, four, five, six. Look at the pieces. Okay, so four sixths are going to be one thing. Two sixths are going to be another thing. But what you're solving for is going to be the two sixths. So you could talk about any aquarium near you. The aquarium down the street is uh, building a new fish tank for tropical fish, uh, whatever you want. So these types of problems, you just make up your own question, but use, look at these other tape diagrams as kind of a, uh, a model of what to do, okay? And so I don't want to give anything away, um, just make up a problem. So I hope this has been helpful up at least to this point and uh, you guys can make up your own problem and have fun with it and uh, click subscribe if you like them and I'll see you guys on the next one. Getting ready for that mid-module test. Yay! Bye!